if one day you need to adopt a distributed database like AWS, DynamoDB, or Azure Cosmos DB, one thing you know, it will be hard. And I'm saying that because I've learned it in the hard way. So in this video, I will show you the potential problem that you can face and what you can do to design your API in a different way and be prepared for it. So what is the problem? The problem starts with the fact that when we think about a paginated endpoint, the natural tendency is to start designing it using page number and also the number of elements that you want to take. And there are historical reasons for that. We are used to use grids where we can go forward and back, we can jump to a given page, and all of that thanks to the page number. The problem is that some of those distributed databases that nowadays we easily rely on in the cloud, they don't like that as much. So this video has one mission. The mission is quite simple. If you are in a field where eventually you might need to move your data structure to something that can scale in a different way, you need to start thinking about this in the small decisions that you take today. Otherwise, it might impose a breaking change in your API in the future, so you can take the best out of the new database that you are moving to. But before we move into that, it's important to say that there's still a place to use navigation using page numbers. If you don't expect a huge amount of data, it will be just fine. Are you building a simple product catalog? Something simple for a small company? Are you building your employees database? You don't need anything as that. But now let's say that you work in a fintech and you need to record a thousand of transactions. So there it might be a problem. You are working with a social network. You need to keep a record of all those transactions. You are ingesting millions of signals that come from devices spread across the world. All of those things might lead to a problem. So you might start today and it might not be a problem, but eventually you will need to scale your system to a different level. And on that moment, those small decisions can influence the technology that you adopt. That's a problem that I faced in the past. I know that we usually say that no one changes the database, but honestly, I think that we can change the database. It's rare, but when it, it's needed, in fact, it's, it's quite important, is those moments where you see that one small decision has a, a huge impact. Obviously, you can go years without needing to do that. But eventually you might have that problem. So it's important when you are designing your APIs to think about this type of problems. Can I suffer with it or not? And be prepared for it. And let's say that you are in one of those cases. You have been building one application and now you are struggling to scale your application to have a distributed system and have the performance that you aim to. And in your system, you have an API that exposes a paginated endpoint where you use the page number. Once you move your application to start using one of those data sources, you might start seeing this type of problems. One, you might start seeing performance problems, or you can see resource utilization that is not optimized. And that sometimes might lead to an extra cost. Let's see some examples. The first one is that often together with the page number, one thing that those endpoints do is to return the total number of entries that you can find on that search. So that means that in some of those technologies that you are moving to, something like Cosmos DB, it might lead to, to the need of having several queries to the database, one to return the data and the other one to grab the total number of entries. So it might be the case that you need two round trips to the database to collect all the information that you need to reply to the request in a retro compatible way. Some databases have a way to send the two requests together so we avoid that latency. However, there's a penalty cost of performing those two queries. So now you know that the count might be a problem, but the page number can also be a problem. For databases like Cosmos or DynamoDB, the idea of an offset, a paginated offset, where we say, now let's position on the record number 1000, is something that is not natural. As an example, for a long time, Cosmos DB didn't have that option at all. 
Today, you can use the limit and the offset to perform a paginated query in the same way that you are used to do in a SQL database. Even Microsoft is saying that using the limit and the offset will increase the cost of performing that query. So according to them, you will use this approach only for one reason, that is optimizing the client site. So it's not an optimization for the data provider, Cosmos DB. It's an optimization to the client that is processing that data. So while it's doable, it's possible to do it, it's not the recommended way to do it. And what is the recommended way to do it, either on something like Cosmos DB, but also in AWS DynamoDB as well? The way that those databases do it is by using something that we call the continuation tokens. A continuation token is something that will say the previous query ended in this spot. So now, if you want to get the data that comes after, just tell me that in the previous one, we stopped here. And now let's grab a few more. So every single time that you perform a query, you will always say, we stopped here. And I will use that as a bookmark. So in the next time that I try to find new data, I can grab the next set of data. You can think about this as the continuous loading feed that you have in something like X, Facebook, or any type of social network, where we get a set of data, and then it doesn't matter if it's the page 2, 30, or 1000. What we say is that we stopped in this given record, and now give me another set of it. This is the idea of a continuation token. One of the advantages of this approach is that it scales in a growing database, so it will maintain the performance even with millions of entries in a given database. So how do you put that in practice? It's quite simple. When you perform your query, in the result, you will find the continuation token. The continuation token, if it's not there, you can use a reference for the last entry on that query. You pick that, you return it. When the client wants the next page, you will say, please give me every single thing after that continuation token. So you bring it back into the next query and you use it as an input saying, please let's start after this continuation token. The way that you can imagine it is like if every single record had a, a number that is sorted, you could say that in the first query we stopped in the number 10. So now you reply and the client will say, okay, give me every single thing that comes after the 10. And now I can filter the next query with all those records that the number, that position was bigger than 10. But now you might have noticed that this will impose a breaking change to the API contract. While in the first version, we had an API that would ask for the page number, now we need to ask for a continuation token. And the continuation token can be a string. And that means that if I'm building an UI on top of that endpoint, I can put there the page numbers. I can only go forward. But as you can see, this is something that you can start applying even if you are starting with database like a SQL database. You can implement this logic of a continuation token even when behind the scenes you are using kind of like a page number. But this way you protect yourself for needing to break the existing API in the future. Because one day if you need to move to a different type of database, it's for a simple reason. You, you want to do it to build to give better performance to the existing clients. So you don't want to need them to change something on their system to start consuming your API in a different way. Two important notes before we keep going. When naming that parameter on your API, you don't need to call it continuation token. There are several options for it. For example, you can simply say after and give the code. So I'm searching for orders after this code, or you can use something like next. There are several options here. And the other important thing is that sometimes you don't want to expose the token that comes right out of your database. So it might be useful to build a hash that will return to the client. So when to use this? Only when you expect to have this problem. Only when you are in a field where it's quite clear that if everything goes well, you might face this problem. And today you are not adopting one of those databases because of cost, for example, on complexity. But if everything goes well, eventually you'll get there. And you need to take this type of design decision 
Now, if you want to avoid the pain in the future, it's just an advice. If you are in other type of problem where you don't have this need of scalability of distributed systems with millions of transactions, you don't need any of this. And also in some cases you might need to keep that page number because it's the best user experience that you can provide to your client. So while it's important to keep this in your mind when taking decisions to design your API, in some use cases, giving the page number is the best user experience. Because as we know, the great user experience relies on those small decisions and it's because of that that you should watch this video right here, where I will share with you some useful tips to build great APIs.